Good morning, everyone. This is Fadi Bakter, President and Chief Commercial Officer of Petros Pharmaceuticals. Um, we're going to be diving into the story of a men's health company, uh, aspiring and reaching and doing uh, things that I think you'll find to be, in many ways, disruptive to the marketplace. Um, I think one of our slogans that I'd like to enter the story with is enable men to live their journey to its fullest potential. And you'll, you'll see as we go through these slides, everything we're about, everything we go for, our therapeutics today and our therapeutics of tomorrow are going to aim at being relevant and pertinent to men and, and their journey in life. Uh, most men live for the ones they love. And the therapeutics chosen by them has to fit that model. And I think to this date, the men's health industry is significantly underserved and is significantly um, not relevant to a man's life. We'll dive into it a little deeper and I'll look forward to your Q&A at the end. Obviously, cautionary note and forward-looking statements. Keep in mind everything we talk about here, uh, some will be forward-looking, some will be aspirational. Um, as far as finance and, and bona fide uh, material, please do look at our 8K that was recently published um, as of September of 2020. Uh, September 30th, and uh, that'll hopefully answer a lot of your questions, and they will be available for follow-up thereafter. Let's talk about the ED market. Everybody knows the ED market. Everybody knows the ED market in terms of products that have been on market for a very long time. We're nearly three decades into oral erectile dysfunction therapy. Uh, you'll recall Viagra was first to launch, Cialis thereafter, Levitra thereafter, uh, and, and so on and so on. The market would seem to be mature and the market would seem to be satisfied. The remarkable finding uh, recently is that the market is still in baby form. It's still nascent. Of the roughly 30 million men in the United States that suffer from erectile dysfunction, there are only about 25% that have actually sought or received treatment. That leaves literally three quarters of men estimated to suffer from erectile dysfunction in this country without therapy, pursuit or access. Um, that's a significant issue. And erectile dysfunction, uh, as, as you'll either relate to, understand, or could, could, certainly, could certainly imagine, is a significant element of life and relationships and connectivity, psychosocial and psychosexual. Uh, and here's, here's another tremendous finding around erectile dysfunction. Recently, it was found, and it's estimated, that one out of every four erectile dysfunction patients are now under 40. We used to believe that the range was, was almost exclusively within that 40 to 70 range. We're realizing that young gentlemen are now coming to, uh, to light, and they're starting to say, a little more empowered, I have this, and I'm not sure why it's happening to me. So that's another massive component to this marketplace. Again, significantly underserved, even with the therapeutics on hand and in market, significantly underserved. Um, we'll dive into deeper concepting around that. Our current asset, commercialized, on market, uh, and revenue generating is Stendra, available in three strengths. 50 milligram is the lowest, 100 milligram is the recommended starting dose, 200 milligram is the max dose. Um, Stendra was introduced to market in 2014 and has amazing things to its story. We can dive deeper into it. Um, I would recommend that you go to standard.com. You'll see the clinical trials published on that, on that website. You'll see some of our selling points and some of our, our uh, value attributes to Stendra. It is a distinct molecule. So it is its own distinct molecule approved by the FDA. We are looking, and this answers the question of accessibility and men's health reachability. We are looking at new reach modalities, channels. Uh, you'll recall potentially the FDA has presented this concept of ensure non-prescription safe utilization regulation and review. Uh, that's a phenomenal new frontier. It points to the concept of if a product can be self-selected appropriately and if there is back-end data to help to help approve certain patients without some of the, the risks patients should be able to access medication without the prescription requirement. The value there is if men are not even engaging the healthcare system because of taboo, stigma, embarrassment, 
well, it's probably better to give them access to a product like an erectile dysfunction medication to at least show them the value of therapeutic and to at least re-engage them in vital uh, human engagements. So Ensure is a phenomenally new concept emerging, and I think uh, as far back as 2012, it's been in discussion with FDA at large for the marketplace. Um, that's one area where we're interested in pursuing, looking to, and understanding. There are new technologies on that front as well. And then I'll talk about the next concept, over-the-counter. Over-the-counter concepting is something that has been looked at, especially in the ED space. Uh, there, there are, there's more conversation to be had, and there's more review to be had. And I think as an organization, we do not want to settle just yet. I think we have conversations that we'd like to have uh, with FDA. We'd like to continue to expand the, the, the discussion. Today, there is a lot more integrated health records, a lot more integrated medical records, um, very supportive and, and, and uh, long and broad-reaching pharmacy networks. So over-the-counter is something, that, and you'll see as I present, uh, is something that's on our minds, something that's in our, in our aspirational uh, playbook. And you'll understand why we have some unique attributes that may help us tell that story in a qualified way. Let's talk about Peronis for a minute. So many of you may be aware of Peronis. Uh, many of you may not be. In fact, one market research study was shockingly, refreshingly, um, just groundbreaking. They looked at nearly 8,000 men, and they put them through a questionnaire. The questionnaire essentially asked them, do you have any of these symptoms? These symptoms are naturally affiliated with the condition of Peyronie's, which is a curvature in the penis or plaque and scarring within the penis that causes abnormalities, whether it's lumps, bumps, uh, palpable, or curvature. And only 0.7% of the men in that study came back and said, yes, I, I've been diagnosed and I know it's Peyronie's. The other 11% that signaled, yes, I have these symptoms and I have these presentations, but I've never been diagnosed, and in fact, I'm not sure what it is, um, is remarkable, which means there is potentially a pretty significant population suffering from Peyronie's disease. Um, and if I, if I can tell you, I've, I've been through hours upon hours of market research where we've had a chance to see some of these patients interact, engage, tell us their story, both patient and partner. Um, when we say that the number of times those interviews lead to tears and the number of times those interviews lead to detrimental outcomes such as separation, divorce, um, psychosocial um, anxieties, and depression, it's remarkable. This is a significant marketplace that is significantly underserved. Today, the FDA-approved options, the, most least, the least invasive of them is a series of injections. Uh, tried and true and very well respected. But beyond that, there's invasive surgery. And I, I, I often um, hate to say this because I've seen many of these uh, topics, but I'll share it with you just to understand the gravity of the alternatives. If you have not seen penile excision, penile degloving, and the surgery associated with removing plaques from the penis, um, I would encourage you to take a look just to understand what these patients face and what their options are today. And there, of course, there are traction devices to help remodel the penis uh, into normal shape. Those are the predominant treatments of choice today. Nothing topical, nothing early phase, nothing that can step in with a uh, low invasiveness that would encourage men to, to pursue uh, engagement once they suffer from uh, pre early signs and symptoms or penile injury, um, so forth and so on. And I think we have a solution in our playbook and currently being early development, early review uh, that we'll talk about in a second. We also have a series of medical device, uh, medical devices, so known as vacuum erection devices. These are, these are critical. So Osborne Erecade, you may have known it, you may have heard of it, is, is one of the, the gold standards out there. It's one of the first devices, if not the first device that was established, I believe in the early 80s, mid 80s. Well known, well respected by physicians, often the device of choice. And um, it's leveraged for 
a post-radical prostatectomy surgery for penile rehabilitation. It's leveraged for peronies, and it's leveraged also for erectile dysfunction, especially for patients who are refractory to oral therapy, and in some cases, in augmentation to oral ED, uh, ED therapy. So that's uh, Osborne and Reich-Aid. We also purchased Postivac, a vacuum erection device line of, uh, of devices. Altogether, it produces a series of about six or seven different devices for the consumer's choice and consumer's benefits uh, and preference, rather. That is our uh, device business unit. It continues to be a, a strong and stable revenue generating business unit uh, with strong domestic and international um, expansion potential. Um, that is that is on our uh, on our minds as we enter 21 and beyond. Drug development pipeline. This speaks now to the innovation we hope to bring to market to the to the condition of Peyronie's disease. We've recently licensed uh, global rights for a compound by currently by the name of H100. Uh, H100 is a compound of uh, tremendous uh, ingredients. And it's currently in front of the FDA to get certain category, patient category designation. And it's being reviewed. And we'll also then follow that up with a pre-IND to understand what the clinical roadmap would look like. The product was studied in a small pilot uh, clinical trial and demonstrated statistically significant results in, in some primary endpoints. So it shows promise on a very early and a very small scale. It shows promise and worth pursuit to become potentially, if approved, and at this time, would be the first topical prescription pharmaceutical grade formulation for early phase Peyronie's disease, which enables men to take better control of preventing what could later become calcified, palpable, and, and penile structural deformity. Uh, it's, it's, it's a landmark achievement. It would bring the disease to light. It would, it would empower men to, to take action and intervene in their, in their therapy and a lot more to be pursued there, but excited to be a part of that story, and excited to be a part of that, that disease state. We talked about Ensure, we talked about OTC. This goes beyond just erectile dysfunction. This is a concept as a men's health company that we'd like to pursue and explore amongst a number of modalities where appropriate and where FDA uh, supports the concept. The Men's Health Empowerment and Consumer Choice essentially works to get prescription grade medication switched to either non-prescription status for unhindered access or over-the-counter status for unhindered access. And it gives men the chance and the opportunity to, within their crazy busy lives, to be able to select the channel, whether it is their local pharmacy or it's an online pharmacy to be able to take control over products that speak to their ailments. Um, we think this is a absolutely tremendous new frontier. And the team about, I'm about to introduce you to, I think is going to speak to the confidence, the empowerment, the well-equipped brain power behind this movement in, across the entire men's health landscape to be explored and to be considered. This is one of the elements that we think we could achieve remarkable uh, landmark achievements within the men's health space. We'll dive deeper into the team behind it as we, uh, as we move on. So many of you may have heard of Juggernaut Capital, John Shulman. If you haven't, I encourage you to visit their site, learn more about their tremendous business acumen, their tremendous success models. Uh, this is an organization that disrupts markets. This is an organization that funds winning formulas. John Shulman has been a thought leader within the capital world for uh, decades now, well-respected, known. Um, I encourage you to, 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 to look at his reputation, look at his team, look at his, uh, his, his website, and recognize the tremendous value. He's been a longtime supporter and is a predominant shareholder within Petros Pharmaceuticals. And he's known Petros before it went public as Metuchen Pharmaceuticals. And recently we've gone public and he has supported the process the entire time with aspirations and a vision that I think is going to, uh, it's going to change the game for us and for the men's health marketplace. Add to that Foundation Consumer Healthcare CEO, President and CEO, Greg Bradley. Greg is a remarkable agent 
in the story of RX prescription to OTC switch. Uh, if you have not read up on Greg Bradley, please do. I think you'll be impressed by his accomplishments and his achievements. He's got years with GlaxoSmithKline, a number of products within his track record portfolio from prescription to OTC switches, happens to have knowledge and, ne and a network from both a regulatory legal medical perspective as resources, but also the personal commercial savvy to understand how to take these products and bring them to a whole new scale as an over-the-counter product option. The most recent that he's executed uh, with Foundation Consumer Healthcare at the helm is one step, plan B, one step. He's taken that product from prescription to OTC, which has driven the number one selling SKU in the U.S. And Greg is, um, he is, he is, he is the champion of this type of movement, and his team is, uh, is just unparalleled. It's remarkable, and they are absolutely impressive. He's also on the board of Petros Pharmaceuticals, a strong advisor, has shared his network, and is a strong believer and proponent of the concept of consumer choice, consumer access, and as much as possible, consumer engagement where appropriate. And I think he's found ways to pursue and achieve that. Excited to have both John Schulman at the helm as executive chair and Greg Bradley as on the board as well, uh, an advisor to, to this concept and to this movement. And here are some of the examples. So this team, this team, and it's augmented by other board members and it's augmented by other tremendously game-changing consultants um, that are associated with this movement. From both a men's health prescription perspective, finding innovation to reach men uh, and new prescription modalities, to finding prescription modalities today that have been underutilized, have not yet met their full market potential, and exploring ways to bring them to over-the-counter grade accessibility as unhindered as possible. And we're certainly going to pursue those types of uh, those strategies and goals. You'll see some of the, the pedigree behind the companies uh, that these individuals have supported. I'll quickly mention a couple of points uh, around myself. Uh, so starting, starting my, my sort of uh, leadership role in the pharmaceutical industry, Auxilium, a small biotech company, men's health debut for me in that company. We had products such as Testa. We had products such as Zyaflex for Peronis. Uh, we had uh, Testapel. We had Edex and bringing that men's health portfolio to value with a tremendously brilliant team um, above me and all around me, Endo decided to purchase Auxilium for $2.6 billion. Um, continue that story on to Adapt Pharma, which was recently purchased by Emergent Bio uh, Solutions. Phenomenal story around Narcan nasal spray, again, associated with high, highly driven, remarkably talented teams that have brought value. I've been able to see that value come to life in many ways, um, as a fly in the wall learning, in some ways as a contributor, and in many ways also as a driver. And I appreciated that journey all along. Knowing that formula, knowing that, that journey, um, I, I think you become, you become quite hooked to the, to the process of introducing value and innovation to a marketplace that has not yet fully um, seen its modern day stage. So the pharmaceutical industry has a lot to achieve and a lot to be relevant and, and pertinent to in, in the 21st century. Um, so excited about introducing that track record to part of this, this, this pedigree team. I think it, uh, at this time, I'd like to open the forum uh, for any questions. Ahu. Great overview and presentation, Fadi. So thanks for that. Uh, so my first question would be, I think, just an overview of the company, history of the company. So when did you go public? Seems to be a young company. And how did it evolve to the current stage? Yeah, great question. So, uh, Metuchen Pharmaceuticals, I'll, I'll, I'll take this one step back. So, Stendra, Stendra was launched at Auxilium, Interesting, interestingly enough. Um, Auxilium very quickly had a strong vision for the men's health space. They're the company that brought Zyflex for Peronis to market, the first pharmaceutical grade FDA approved collagenase formulation uh, that patients can now inject into their palpable plaque. Um, and so they saw Stendra. They saw, they saw Stendra available. It had been approved at 2012, and they purchased it in 2014. And it launched it, saw the, the tremendous value behind it, um, introduced the, the latest label uh, edition of can be taken as early as approximately 15 minutes, 
Um, and with that, it ha was handed over to Endo along with the package. Endo decided to dive deep into the biologic space, in which case Stendra was then passed on to Vivis, um, and then ultimately Metuchen, which is where we are, Metuchen Pharmaceuticals. Metuchen continued to see the value in Stendra and brought it into their portfolio. Uh, while having it in their portfolio, continued to reestablish infrastructure, continued to establish market, found that there are many loyal physicians and patients attributed to Stendra. And we began to look at the marketplace and we started to realize it was underserved with significant potential. In 2019, Metuchen was able to take Stendra across the entire year with quarter over quarter growth consistently throughout 2019. It was onto something and the market was still very much thirsty and the market was still very much interested in having another erectile dysfunction oral therapy. And again, I'll point everybody to Stendra.com to learn more about the product and, and realize um, this its entire uh, label. With that, um, I think we've, we've began to tell the story. We began to recognize what will it take for us to, to realize our full potential. And we began the journey of looking for partners, looking for um, bolt-on organizations that are looking for asset generating, uh, revenue regenerating assets rather, uh, in which case we have found our reverse merger uh, process and transaction, which came to fruition on December 2nd when we became a fully uh, publicly traded company as Petros Pharmaceuticals. And we, here we are today. We, we take the, the full value of Stender, what it could offer the marketplace, in addition to portfolio aspirations and and uh, revenue gener generating assets from RX to OTC potentially. Um, and, and here we are with a publicly uh, traded name a big reputation, a big responsibility, but a very worthy cause and a very realistic aspiration. Sounds great. My second question will be in line with the first one. So you are certainly right that men's health is an undervalued space. And I do not know many companies only focus on men's health. Because we see companies, they have some pipeline assets in that uh, landscape, but we don't see um, just focus on men's health type of companies. How do you, how, what are the other companies that uh, you think that will be closest to your comp and how your valuation compares to them when you think about it? It's a great question. I'll tell you, I think uh, the only company that comes to mind in the public space with muscle power, integrity, and credibility um, that I respect very highly is Endo Pharmaceuticals. They do have a men's health division within their broad-based uh, portfolio. Um, Endo is probably the, uh, the nearest large-scale player. At one point, um, AbbVie had men's health products, and, and, and um, uh, Lilly, AstraZeneca, they, they, they've had men's health uh, assets, but there's really nothing today. There's really nothing today that is fully concentrated on just men's health. There are some smaller private companies that are, they have maybe a single asset that they brought to market, uh, and still kind of emerging and finding their legs as well. But there's really no one else in this space, in the public market, that is solely focused on men's health the way we are. That's actually quite powerful, I would say. Uh, I think I would like the, our audience to live with the uh, uh, catalyst. What would you think the value generating catalyst to look for in the next 12 to 18 months? Yeah, I think, I think uh, the predominant catalyst that comes to mind is our ability to disrupt the marketplace with two significant options brought to promise, uh, brought to certainty, but brought to, to, to FDA-backed uh, potential. And that is finding new ways to access erectile dysfunction therapy without the necessity of prescription. Now, that's not to achieve that status within that period of time, but to achieve uh, feedback from FDA to achieve a roadmap that's credible and been reviewed and verified and validated to where it demonstrates uh, the potential for this to be a, a true uh, accessibility. I think that is a significant catalyst. The other is to receive feedback and roadmap, again, credi credible uh, development pathway to, to, to launch the potentially first ever uh, at, the, at this time topical treatment for Peronis. Those are two significant catalysts because it speaks to um, great progress on two fronts that are currently uh, either stagnant or not pursued. And then lastly, of course, to demonstrate Stendra uh, growth and market receptivity. 
Thank you so much for your participation. Much appreciate your time and all the information that we get from your presentation. Thank you. It's my pleasure, Ahu. Thank you. And thanks to Noble.